Hey there, it's Dennis for BC Tesla Guy. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Ingenix Boost 50 for a Tesla Model 3 long range. So let's get into it. So you can see right here, there's two modules. There's the Boost 50 module and then the nice try module and that's just plugged into this cable and then it's a splitter. So this piece right here plugs into the MCU underneath the dash and then the original cable that is plugged into the MCU plugs into this piece right here. So it's a bit tricky. It's pretty tight up there from other videos that I've watched. So we'll have to just take a look at it. So I've watched a few videos prior to doing this. So my understanding is the cable to disconnect underneath the passenger foot is a bit hard to get at and really the easiest way is just to feel in there and then unclick it and then push it off and then plug the new one in and plug that one in. So let's take a look at that process of clicking it here and then we'll go from there. So here's the cable that plugs into the MCU and so what you're going to do is press on this button right here you can see and then that pulls it off and then you're going to just snap this in and then plug the other one into here and it will snap into it as well so let's get into it, it should only take a couple of minutes hopefully so the first thing you're going to do is pull off the cover for the battery and then using a 10 millimeter socket loosen the negative cable and then pull this off and just put that to the side. The second step is to turn off the battery from the main power bank. And so you can see down here underneath the rear seat, there's a little lever. So you just pop that up and that exposes the battery. So we'll pull this. And there's the uh, connector right there. So you just press on the center piece right here. So you'll press on that piece right there. Push it down and then there should be a clunk. And you can take this off. Um, the instructions say you can put this on right away. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'll just leave this sitting here. So the next step is just to unplug and plug in the new one. So the next step is to take off the cover that's underneath here. And there's just some uh, typical Tesla plugs. There's one back here and there's one over there. So I'll go ahead and take those off and then we'll move to the next step. Once you get the cover off, you're going to wanna just disconnect the, the light. And then you can push this to the side. So that's out of the way. So now we're down to the tough part. So you can see up there, just above that one. So it's in behind those green ones there. You gotta disconnect that one. So I tried getting at it from the bottom, but uh, I'm gonna use the other instructions that include removing the glove box. So you pull off this panel here, this one here, then this side, and then you're gonna remove the T20s that hold the T20s. To hold it up. So it's not mandatory, but I found it quite difficult. In fact, I couldn't do it without taking the glove box off. I tried for more than half an hour. So he's just showing you how to take it off. I would have done the video, but I was quite frustrated and they did a really good job. So I'm just doing a voiceover. They didn't have much audio on there. So you're just snapping off the top piece. Again, everything just snaps off. And there's three T20s at the top and one on the side that you need to remove. And then there's two underneath, one on the right side and one on the left side. So you'll remove those there as well. And then once you've got those out, 
you're going to remove the airbag. There's four E10s, which I used a metric eight because I didn't have an E10, it worked fine. And you'll pull that off. That's just to get access to the last remaining T20s that are at the bottom part of the glove box. So there's the screws for the uh, airbag. You're just gonna pop that down. Again, it snaps and then just lay it down out of the way. And then you're gonna remove the T20s, one on the right side and one on the left side there. And once you get those out, then on the right side, there's a clip and you just pull it out with your finger. He's pointing that out right there. And then you just give it a little bit of force and it unsnaps everything. And then he's removing the um, wires. That one there was for the light. I just removed that one. I just kind of swung it out of the way. Um, didn't really need to take it completely out of the way. Now this gives you access so you can see everything that you're doing, but it's still difficult to actually unplug. So he's pointing out there, that's the plug. So it's easy to get off. You just push in that little lever that I had pointed out previously and just pull it off. And then the way that I found the easiest way to plug it in was to bend it to the side. Okay, so what he's showing there is the, the way the cable is bent backwards. So once you do have it off, the, you want to bend the cable that's for the uh, Ingenix in the same form. So back like that, and then you're gonna slide it backwards up against the MCU. And then when it passes the where the plug goes in, then just kind of push it or nudge it forward. It should get into that track. Um, at that point, what you're gonna do is just push it completely in and you need to make sure you hear the click. So once it's clicked in there, then the next step is just plugging in the original cable into the jumper cable that's uh, left remaining open and then once you've done that then all you need to do is put the glove back box back together put the cover on and then reconnect the battery so here are my final thoughts on the ingenix boost 50 for the tesla model 3 or y um, first off uh, just um, cover off a couple of things one is the boost 50 is for the dual motors only there is a version for the standard range plus but that requires that the motor is a 980 and most of them aren't only the earlier ones were and if you're fortunate enough to have a long range uh, three or Y that has the 980 motor you can actually go out and purchase the Ghost version, which actually brings it down to 3.2 seconds compared to the 3.7 claim for this version, which is the 50. The Ghost version is 150 uh, horsepower added, where this one is only 50. Now, when it comes to the installation, uh, you may have noticed I had a, you know, a pretty tough time putting it together. Uh, what I would say is, for the average person, um, you know, warranty-wise, probably don't do it if you're really concerned about warranty. And then physically, if you're planning on like taking this off and on, or you know, like you're going to take it into service and you want to take it off, uh, that's going to be quite a bit of work, right? So you know, if you're getting, you know, a simple service, probably not. But if you've got something related to drivetrain, then. Yeah, even myself, I'm gonna take that thing off. Um, so for me, I'm gonna to have to tear apart the glove box, which takes about 10 minutes to take out. Um, so the question that everybody's gonna have is, is it worth the uh, $1,200 uh, Canadian that I paid to install it? Um, absolutely. It's, it makes my car a less than four seconds zero to 60 car. Um, it, you can, it really pulls, and it's solid pull, right from the line all the way up to 60. It's like, it's going. And then the other benefits are the preheating of the battery. So if you're going to like a, a, a non-Tesla DC charger, especially when we get access to those CCS adapters, hopefully this year in 2022, then you'll want to 
preheat the battery so that you get the fastest charge. And there's no way to do that uh, within the Tesla app uh, unless you're pre-charging to a local supercharger that's close to the one that you're going to, the DC fast charger. And I would probably say that there isn't probably gonna be a close one because otherwise you'd be going to a supercharger, right? And then uh, the other benefit that I just love is the auto presenting door. So uh, you have to turn that on with, within the app, but what that allows you to do is as you're walking up to the car, uh, when you get close to it, it knows that it's you uh, from your phone and it just cracks open the door. So uh, prior to this, so prior to having this function, the way that I open the door is I press the button in, the door pops open and then I grab the edge with my fingers like this. Well now, when I walk up to my car, the door pops open and then I just have to grab the edge by the window and uh, I'll be putting a video together on that, but it is really nice. And it, it doesn't um, work if you have it at home where your car goes to sleep because your car must be awake for this function to work so uh, it's it's a good thing because like i park my car in the garage it goes to sleep and this you know moving around i could go in the garage with my phone it's not gonna pop open the window or pop open the door but if i'm at um, you know i go to the mall and then i'm walking up to my car it pops open the music starts playing it's all great Anyway, I, I'm really liking the Ingenix Boost 50. And again, uh, the toughest part is the installation. It, it, it's not a simple thing to install. Uh, but once you do get it installed, um, it's plug and play, it just, it's just working. And then if you need access to the app, um, what I've done is um, I have a spare phone you know, I have a phone that I, I don't use anymore. I connect that to that Ingenix Wi-Fi, and that's it. That's all it does anyway, because I used to just leave it in the drawer. It didn't do anything. So now I'm using it just for that. I don't have to try and connect to that network with my personal phone that I'm using. Um, I don't have to follow the instructions which say, like, don't uh, go on the internet and forget the network and all those type of things. I've just got a dedicated phone. Um, you can do that with a dedicated iPhone, Android, a tablet, uh, whatever you want. But yeah, it, that actually makes it a lot easier. The Wi-Fi isn't that strong, so you're, you're going to have to be in the car for it to uh, preheat the battery or you know take a look at any of the settings. Anyway, thanks for watching my video and keep watching for the zero to sixties that I've, uh, I'm going to be doing with the car and we'll see how fast it is.